Hi, UQ Math 2504 2023 students. This is a video about big homework. So big homework is uh, big. What can I say? So let's find the assessment here. Where is the assessment? Here's big homework. And I just want to give a bit of an overview of the homework. Um, so read here about how uh, we suggest working in pairs. Uh, you should have a, a partner uh, to work with. Certainly don't uh, split up the work and don't look at your partner's work. What you should do is perhaps find a lead for every question and a reviewer for every question. So when it comes to a question, you can either be the lead or your partner is a lead. And if you are the lead, your partner is a reviewer and vice versa. This will uh, let you, well, first of all, get uh, better outputs, better results, uh, better programs, better solutions. Uh, but it will also help you prepare for the quiz, which is the next piece of assessment after big homework. Um, now you submit big homework in these uh, Jupyter notebooks. So if you go to this Jupyter notebook, for example, make a download this notebook, make a copy for yourself, and then submit it. Just if we're here, uh, one common mistake that people often do is uh, download this website. So go. Sometimes people go to the browser website and do file save as that will not download this notebook that will download the html content of github that surrounds this notebook what you need to do to download this notebook is one of several things one thing you that you can do is you can actually go to the uh, github repo here and clone it but maybe you're not so clear on how to do that yet so you don't know how to clone it another thing you can do is you can download the zip of this uh, repo and then extract the specific notebook out of here. So this repo has all of our course materials, all the stuff that we use to create course materials, okay, practicals and lecture materials, etc. Uh, but that's you know that's one. And then you would extract. You'd go to the submissions forms Jupiter and pull the individual notebooks. That's a, that's one thing you can do. A different thing you can do is you can actually go to this notebook, hit raw. And then what you see here in the browser is the JSON, JavaScript object notation, formatted contents of the notebook. This might not mean much to you just yet, but uh, actually in one of the questions of big homework, you deal with this format. And then what you can do is, well, for example, you can just uh, select it all and save it in a file and make sure that file has a dot .ipynb format, or you can just down more simply, you can just download this file right here. Okay, so that's just ways of getting the notebook. Let's get back to the homework. A bit more, okay. So there's a whole stuff about submission. Uh, all of our assessments get submitted with a voice recording. Uh, so there are instructions on how to do that. And here's a marking criteria. All right, so let me just say that this homework is big because it's big. Uh, this course, as I said, doesn't have an exam um, and only a quiz. And then this whole, in this homework, you're really starting with some level of knowledge and you'll hopefully end with a much bigger level. Use uh, both the main practicals and the support practicals if you need. Support practicals are optional. So um, I'll just highlight a few things where some questions have a wall of text and that wall of text is requires actually um, um, a lot of work and sometimes there's a wall of text and that actually comes to make your life easier so you just need to read through that text and understand it so let me just go question by question and and focus on what's important so question one should be quite straightforward whereas question two is a question where i really recommend it's it's it instructs you you kind of get into julia code and into code in general with question two so i really suggest that both you and your partner do this perhaps side by side or sharing screen on Zoom and working like that. By the way, it's important to have a good messaging system with your partner. Emails don't work and text messages are okay if you can do them from your, compu from your computer, but if you can only do them via phone, you actually want to copy, paste, and send a lot of things. So having some WhatsApp, Signal, Slack, some other messaging manner that's easy to message between you and your partner for sharing information is probably useful. Okay, so that's question two, and it's it's actually quite straightforward, and it gets you into things uh, because it's it's very prescriptive. Now, question three is already 
a bit different. Um, it's in terms of programming doesn't require a whole lot, but you, because you're only doing a loop and compare and calculating this thing and comparing it to this thing, it's sorry, calculating this thing and comparing it to this thing. But um, it has all kinds of issues with the fact that very big numbers cannot be represented as ints, and then we go to big ints. So when you get to 3b and 3c, uh, make sure you think about that. And this is how you do rational numbers in Julia. Question four is a standard computing uh, question where we'll, you'll do some string parsing. And this is one of those questions that doesn't take a lot of footprint, but uh, it might take you a bit to understand and how, how to do it, uh, et cetera. Um, Question number five, again, 5A is uh, quite easy. And 5B, uh, one step beyond, you actually need to find or, or implement by yourself an algorithm for finding the divisors of a number. Uh, not too hard, um, but uh, it will take some time. Now, when you get to question six, this is a one that has often puzzled many students. So some questions are new and some are have been uh, around for over the years. We kind of love this question and you might form some love-hate relationship with this question as well. Um, so communicate with many people around ed. It's fine to share ideas. It's not fine to share code uh, per se. Uh, in consultation hours, you can show your code. Um, question number seven, is now not a mathematical question per se, even though it has some mathematical formulas here. It's rather a, you could call it a classic computer science algorithmic question where you're just doing some search. At first you're doing a linear search and then you're doing a geometrically growing search. And finally you go to binary search. So when you get to D, uh, you'll need to see, hey, what is binary search? Question number eight is also a uh, classic uh, computer science -y. Uh, type of thing, sorting, and we'll speak about that a lot in the units of the course. Um, keep in mind that implementing quicksort might be, or here in 8C, might be uh, quite difficult because you'll actually need to look at the pseudocode for quicksort, but then convert it to Julia um, and uh, just, just see how you go. So some people spent a lot of time on this question uh, in previous years in, in 8C per se. Uh, question number nine has to do with linear algebra. You do need to work with pen and paper as you're working on this course, just so you kind of also kind of have a vision of what's happening in the computer and the pen and paper. So in this case, we're just doing matrix multiplication in different ways. In this way, we're learning some Julia notation, but also just thinking about things. Now, your uh, big homework is submitted via GitHub repo, and there'll be just a bit of a technical challenge to get GitHub and Git going on your computer if it's not already. Um, the tutors are here to help you with that. Uh, you can also ask the lecturers or ask uh, any of us in the consultation hour as well. Um, so this question is all about setting up the GitHub repo for hand in. Okay, keep in mind that authentication is something that might be a bit of a hurdle, but basically you just need a personal access token or SSH authentication. Now this question teaches you something completely different. It's just a bit of a, a few Unix, Linux, Mac terminal, if you have a Mac command, or in Windows, git bash command. So it asks you to do a few uh, terminal commands. And your main use case of, of, of terminal, of command line in this course is, is for git, uh, but it goes hand in hand with programming and has not disappeared from the world. Now, when we get to this question, this is a question where you're dealing with parsing in JSON files. Uh, it only has one item, but it, it has quite a lot to do in it. There's no mathematics in it. Uh, it's just about data processing and working with a file. And you're actually working with a file, which is a Jupyter notebook, which is like many other things, not everything, but many other things stored in JSON format. Okay, now this, these last questions, uh, they're of a different nature. They are, uh, you could call them numerical in nature. And you have complete courses in UQ that uh, focus on numerics per se, All right? So here we're just getting a taste of things. Um, so with this question, you're doing numerical derivatives. There'll be a lot of that in, this lec in the lectures and not a lot, but there'll be some info in the lectures. Now, keep in mind that in general, you can't do the homework if you're not following the lecture. So the your algorithm for doing things should probably be follow the lecture, 
look at the lecture code. The lecture is very code-based. This is a course with code. Reproduce that code, understand what it means. Don't hesitate to go and dig into every little detail of the code. Why is this character like this? And why is that character like that? And what's happening here and what's happening there? So for example, with this question, if you just look at the numerical derivatives example in the lectures, um, the translation should be quite straightforward. Now, then you get to question 14. Now, in this question, this looks very intimidating, but it seems like we're giving you a full math lesson. Specifically, the lesson here is something that you will, might learn if you ever do STAT 3004, okay? Maybe a bit in STAT 2003, okay? Um, uh, but it's, it's actually straightforward. You understand mathematics. It just describes, hey, you're looking for stationary probability pi, and there are different ways to compute them, one, two, three, four. And we ask you to compute them, and we give you some code. So please don't be intimidated with the wall of text or math text that goes here. And this is something that you could start to read into. You can work in parallel on all of way before you, you go to for other previous questions as well, because you just kind of want to let this sink in, especially if you're the lead of this question within your partnership, within your group. And the same goes for questions 15 and 16, which deal with numerical solution of differential equations. There's quite a lot of a story here, but a lot of it is a background story. And at the end of the day, what you need to do is, is it a bit simpler than, um, than having to actually derive the, uh, the underlying differential equation, et cetera. For example, runge kutta method uh, is just in, described, well, this is how it's, this is the algorithm for runge kutta method, and you're asked to implement that, uh, and a few other things. So again, these last two questions ha have a wall of text surrounding them, and that wall of text has a story associated with it. Uh, you should dig into that story, but you don't have to be an expert of that story to actually solve the question. And finally, the perspective seminar. These are 10 bonus points, certainly worth to do. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, Megan's uh, perspective seminar happening, uh, I think, in the third week. Let's just see the schedule before we finish this video. So in the third week, yes. And so you summarize that and you get 10 bonus points, which can, of course, cover up for lost points if you've lost some elsewhere. OK, big homework will take time. Um, you'll come in as one person and go out as a different person. I hope that different person is not just going to be frustrated, but actually also more knowledgeable, uh, capable, um, and ideally happy. All right. Good luck, everybody.